Hello and welcome to this week's top five. It is the week of September 1st, 2016. I'm Christina Reese. I'm Randy Knudsen. And I'm Brandon Zeck. And we're doing the fall preview. Mm -hmm. The top five shows this fall that we're excited about. These are all uh, nonprofit museums or Kunsthallas, not gallery shows. Right. Uh, number five is at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston and it's Degas, A New Vision, opening in October. So it's an impressionism show. Tutus, ballerina. Why would we pick this? Look, because it's the guy. He's he's. It's not just the ballerinas. He was. Uh, have you seen his orchestra pit paintings? I mean, come the on. The framing, the cropping. He crops like oh. a master. He's great. He's great. He's much darker than we think that he he's, is. He's he's viewed wrongly as being very sweet because he painted ballet dancers. But Which ballet back dancers then, back in the day were kind of prostitutes. Yeah. So we, this is the only U.S. venue for this show. More than 200 works. More than 200 works. Show. This is going to be a big show. This is a not miss show this fall. So, Number four is Jonathan Shipper Cubicle, which is at Rice Gallery. This opens on October the 6th. So Jonathan Shipper is no, he's the guy who makes rooms collapse, who makes cars slowly uh, collide, uh, collide with each other and crush, but over a longer period of time. So the collapsing rooms, this will be a collapsing room, except this time he's using office cubicles. So what was once thought of as the brave new world of office design and that would give everybody some privacy and yet, you know, make them productive, make them productive and, and turned out to be like an awful dehumanizing way to design offices. Uh, he's now going to turn into a, a pile of trash. All right, so number three is uh, it's a focus show at the Fort Worth Modern. It's Lorna Simpson, a Brooklyn based artist who's been exhibiting for 25 plus years. Um, she tackles race, she tackles gender. Um, the work is very beautiful. It's often, there's rep she uses repetition, she uses collage, she does a lot of works on paper, but these are large scale silkscreen paintings basically. She's taken images from Ebony and Jet magazines, older issues of these magazines, and used them in a, on panel. She's interested in process. This stuff is kind of mesmerizing. It's also very political. And it's I, to me, what I'm noticing about focus shows over the last couple of years is that Andrea Carnes, the curator who does these shows at The Modern, is starting to use the focus shows instead of for just emerging artists, um, she's starting to use them as capsule shows for veteran artists. This is the thing that I'm looking forward to seeing the most probably in Dallas-Fort Worth over the next couple of months. It opens on November 19th. Uh, so number two is Dorothy Hood, The Color of Being El Color de Ser at uh, the Art Museum of South Texas. Corpus Christi. Corpus. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a big show. It's a show of uh, 160 works by Dorothy. A lot of them are owned actually by the Art Museum of South Texas. Uh, Dorothy Hood, if you don't know, very fantastic Texas modernist. Uh, she passed away in 2000, but she's She's a big deal. She's really. a very big deal. Houston artist, really, and and is not as well known as she should be, either regionally or nationally. That's true. There's a good argument to be made that she was the most important Texas modernist, and this is, the, I think, the first major retrospective. It's very important. You should go see it. I think the reason that she's not better known outside of Houston and certainly Texas is that she never had the kind of gallery represent, representation that would just push her in New York and LA where she needed to be pushed. Well, this is this is a major show. Don't miss this show. So number one of our fall preview, it's at Ballroom Marfa. It opens on September 23rd. It's going to be open all fall. It's uh, the Institute for New Feeling. It's a collective, small collective out of Carnegie Mellon. Uh, they do mostly video. They're taking this collision of corporate and uh, industrial movie making or, you know, uh, marketing speak, advertising speak, and kind of meshing it with new agey, like, uh, healing. Self-help. Self -help. All through the lens, though, of internet sort of culture and video. Yeah, but they're satirists. I mean, they're not. That's what, that's what makes me like it, is that it, there's a sense of humor to it. It's not taking itself too seriously whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to dislike the show and I was, the more I researched these people, the more interested I got. It helps, but it doesn't help that the videos are so slick. They're so slick. Mm -hmm. they're, and um, it's, a mar it's like a marketing firm. It this really is what is. you would expect from a marketing firm. They, this sounds convoluted, but there's a lot more going on than just this new work by them. Um, the the uh, Artist Film International out of London th is part of this and there will be 14 other countries, institutions in 14 other countries will be streaming video into ballroom. 
uh, including uh, Serbia and Portugal and Italy and Afghanistan. So new videos from artists in those places while the Institute for New Feeling will be streaming their video out into these institutes in these other countries. And the bottom of the barrel. So every year we pick our least favorite show of the fall. It's Matthew Barney's River of Fundament, co-hosted by the CAM and the MFAH. Can, can I say I'm actually kind of excited? Brandon, I've, I've Brandon is any... actually excited. Brandon missed the Cree Master Cycle the first time around. Oh, well, so... <laughs> you're going to have to go back to the museum three times to see all of it. It's a six-hour film. Um, both Christine and I, we saw the exhibitions related to the film, River of Fundament, you know, all his of props. the objects. Yeah. And, and, you know, I always contend that Matthew Barney's objects don't really work that well outside of the films. I have a couple of reviews from writers in Los Angeles that I will just quote from for River of Fundament. Number one. I thought it was a bloated, macho, little boy's wet dream full of cars, Indians, Norman Mailer, Hemingway, ancient Egypt, and lots and lots of shit. Did I mention there's a shit dildo? Because there's a shit dildo. And then the second review is uh, one line, the title of the show is also its review. It's going to be a busy, busy fall, so...